All right guys, so I'm finishing up the edit on today's vlog. I'm really excited to show you guys this step-by-step -step video today. Uh, we did an asymmetrical pixie haircut with a tapered edge. This is the end result, so nice and short, tapered up, longer front, everything's disconnected. So I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this cut. I don't wanna waste any time. Let's get to the step-by-step -step video uh, of today. And I hope you guys are enjoying this vlog. Let me know what you think below in the comments. Hit the subscribe button. And remember, new video every day at 10 a.m. So make sure that you tell your friends. Let's get started. Here we go. All right, guys, so we're gonna start off by taking a right-hand side parting. But if your guest parts on the left-hand side, then just do it on the left-hand side. Then we take from mid-crown in the back, down to behind the ear that's really just to part that off and then I take along the parietal ridge to create that rectangular shape now you'll notice that I left out the entire uh, right hand side of the part and I just sectioned off that rectangle on the left hand side which is our heavy side of the haircut now I'm working down center back creating my guideline for my traveling guide that I'm creating so everything's being over-directed back to the previous section throughout the entire back side of this haircut. So you'll notice my finger angle is shifting a little bit more towards the head shape, but really I'm just following the head shape with my fingers. So even though it appears that I'm, make, I'm taking the hair tighter to the head, at this point I am not. I'm just following the head shape down. So working palm to palm, traveling guide, you can see that even though I'm in the round of the head right now, I'm not over directing the hair backwards. I'm just following that head shape. Be working with a traveling guide is the hardest thing that you can do in haircutting because it's so hard to stay consistent throughout the haircut. So just make sure that you're really following that guide, that you see the guide and that you're not taking too much hair at once so that you can stay consistent with your haircut. I had a question a couple weeks back about um, how do you know that you're overdirecting it to where you need to overdirect it to? Uh, so my answer to that would be make sure that when you bring that hair back and you see your guideline that you see a nice solid line. If that line looks diffused at all or it looks like it has rough edges, that means that you've grabbed too much hair in your guideline and you're overdirecting your guide. Um, your guide should look very, very solid. So just make sure a key factor with that, don't just look for that darkness coming through your section and cut. Make sure that it's a solid line that you're seeing through the hair. Uh, now we're going to work scissor over comb, making sure that steady blade stays with the bone of my comb. And I'm just using that comb to lift and go through the hair. I'm using the wider teeth. This is my YS Park 339 comb. I'm also using my Mizutani scissor. It's a six inch scissor. Uh, I'm in love with every Mizutani scissor that I own. I have about 12 of them. So every single one of them is great. So definitely uh, check them out on Free Salon Education if you're looking for new scissors. Now we're, I'm working through, I like using a six inch scissor at, at minimum for scissor over comb because I can just get more hair in my hand at a time. And then, uh, so now that I've done that scissor over comb detail, I wet the hair again, and now I'm going through and cutting the opposite side, the right hand side. And to be completely honest with you guys, I this haircut I did all weekend long. So I actually uh, re-wet and cut this side uh, on a completely different day. So uh, I was trying to get this video done for you guys over the weekend, and uh and it was just taking multiple days. So that's another good thing about staying consistent and making sure you're working with true guidelines because you could leave a haircut for an entire day and come back to it and it's still going to be um, where it needs to be, I guess. So, all right, we're working through. You'll notice um, a couple things change. I'm working through, I'm scooping underneath the hair, still pushing that new hair towards the guide and still working palm to palm through the haircut. That keeps me consistent as I'm cutting. Now we're gonna work with a traveling guide here as well, but we're gonna go from section two to one and then three to two, and then four and five are all gonna come back to three. So I hope that makes sense for you guys. I wanted to do this diagram for you, but um, this is our over direction so that we keep a little bit of weight into the front. So here is our section number one that we cut. I'm now cutting on top of my fingers uh, because of comfort. So working my way down, that's section one. Then we work to two. Two goes back to one. So it's a slight over direction. It's gonna push a little bit of extra weight forward. Finding my guideline. 
Now, the top part of that section, you're gonna see that over direction because the head shape's moving away. So we're gonna get a heavier weight line throughout the top of the section. And now I'm gonna scoop everything and everything's gonna come back to section three. So we're cutting three, then shifting four, then bringing back five, and then that gives us that extra weight in the front. Over direction is such a big part of hair cutting but it's really important to make sure that you understand how far you're over directing hair. We've talked about in a couple of the previous uh, vlogs about the fact that if you over direct hair too far, you're gonna push too much weight. This is a good example of just pushing enough weight to work with later. Now we're gonna go through, this is the crown of the head, so I separate the front and the back. I've let out that little rectangle shape that we uh, took out of there, and now I'm gonna build up a nice blend but with a, a little bit heavier weight line into the back. So everything's coming back towards me, still cutting with the same guide as we used in the back, but blending in the crown. Working palm to palm, this is on a rotating kind of axis. So let's say pie shaped sections or um, you know triangle shaped sections throughout the back and blend that. Now we're gonna work with a stationary guide and this is going to create more of a, you could call it a triangular shape in the front, but we're over directing, pushing a ton of weight forward uh, to finish out the haircut. So working on top of my fingers, you can see my finger angle is following the head shape um, in the back. It's gonna leave a little bit of a longer point towards the parting, which I like to have a little bit of a heavier shift at the part because it makes it a little bit more versatile. Um, and allows it to lay a little heavier. Sometimes people layer that too much and then it just looks too kind of um, spiky and I, I don't know the words, but it just doesn't look right to me uh, always. So going through, that is the front of the haircut. Now I'm gonna start the blow dry using my 339 comb. Um, I like blow drying with a comb on a pixie haircut because it does soften the hair. Uh, this is something that uh, in the salon, Brian is asking me how you get a mannequin so flat. Well, this is anybody uh, with any hair type. You're trying to smooth out their hair. You can use a 339 comb. And then I go through with my Bricado Vibrostate iron and I iron out uh, the rest of the haircut. Give it a little nice shine and polish. Now we're gonna work with our Mizutani Solid. This is a seven inch scissor. Like I said before, six inch minimum for me with scissor over comb. We got our YS Park 209 comb and we're gonna go through, that's got nice wide teeth. We're working with dry hair at this point. I'm gonna scoop up the hair, tap it down into the comb and then work that seven inch scissor all the way up the head shape. Now I love a seven inch scissor for dry cutting as long as it's a good seven inch scissor because a lot of times with a long blade you lose a lot of power in the cut. With the Mizutani scissor you don't have to worry about that. This has the uh, ball bearing axis in the screw so it's got a really nice smooth open and close. And again, with a lot of seven inch scissors, you couldn't do that with the tip either because the tip is just a little bit weaker so it would push the hair. We're just gonna go around. Detail work is the key to this cut. Um, a lot of people would just leave it finished, blow it dry and get the client out. I think the detail work is what separates you know, good hairdressers from great hairdressers. So make sure that you're working through putting in that detail work. I love, this is one of the newer scissors from Mizutani. This is a titanium version. Uh, so it's a $50 upgrade to get the titanium black version of the scissor. Makes the scissor a lot stronger. Um, so I like that. Just working through. Now I'm gonna go into my, back to my six inch scissor and work that detail work around the ear. Most of the time when I'm working around the ear, I, uh, I like to use a little bit smaller scissor just so I have more control. Uh, we're gonna straighten out that sideburn area. And I'm just working that steady, so the steady blade is going against the skin during that, so it doesn't, so I don't have to worry about cutting anybody. So I just work through. So make sure that if you haven't gotten down the fact that just your uh, thumb moves, you wanna work on that first, and then start working that steady blade against the skin to do your detail work. Working along the skin, adding in those details. That's where over direction came in and played a key role in what we're creating now. We over directed the hair to add that extra weight in the front, so then I can go through and add that detail work in. Again, over direction on the top, push the weight down, but that doesn't finish out the haircut. You wanna go in, put in that detail work. 
scissor over comb is one of my favorite techniques there is because it's just there's just something about combing up hair and watching it fall and drop into a perfect formation. So it's almost like you're going through and just checking your work uh, as you go, but adding that soft detail to it. So now I used Carve from Bricado. This was uh, this is our texture cream uh, wax that I really I, I've fallen in love with. I use it on almost every cut that's shorter uh, to get that texture and movement. But you can see cool haircut. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you can use it in the salon. Share it with your friends. Hit the like button and follow us. Subscribe right here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching.